Morning, Periscope fam. How are you this morning? Good morning. Good morning. How are you? How are you? Put this in landscape. Let's see. Is that a good view? Hello, DF Happy. How are you? Just waiting a few. Just waiting one more minute. For a few more people to jump on and for me to try and set up my um, phone so it's not giving you too much of a cleavage <laughs> view. Um, good morning, good morning. This is Elkie of Savvy Moms Unite. Unite. Good morning, John Dishman. Um, my name is Elkie of Savvy Moms Unite, where I teach moms to live a simple, realistic, and um, practical life. Um, I am a single mom to one child. I have a daughter who's now going to be nine years old. I can't even believe it. And I've been a single mom for most of her life. So um, in my process, I have had to learn a few things about what I'm capable of, one, what um what i would have to do thank good morning johnny mac good morning this is savvy mom elkie of savvy moms unite i was just giving you a little context to my story um i have been a single mom for most of my child's life she's about to be nine years old and in my journey i've learned a lot of things about myself and what i'm capable of and the things that i had to do in order to become a savvy mom um, I decided that there was a lot of things I just had to teach myself or learn from others in order to, to be the parent that I wanted to be. Um, I had a lot of support. I won't say that I did it completely by myself. I always had the support of my family. But with my move to Massachusetts, I was away from family um, for the first time in my life where I was by, on my own to take care of my kid. And in that time, in that process... There's a lot of things that I learned about myself and I had to um, do some self-evaluation and some self, um, you know, do that reflection that was necessary for me. And part of that reflection required me saying to myself and to others around me that there are times that I have to do me. And when we say that, some people may think, oh, that's selfish. You're putting yourself first. How could you think about doing you when you have so many responsibilities and things to think about? Well, I say this to you because this is something I've struggled with. When you put yourself last, when you're not on that top of your priority list to take care of yourself, how are you any good to the people around you? I know you've probably heard this before. Someone has said it to you if you're like, how I was where everybody else's issue and problem became mine and whatever I was dealing with took the back seat, right? So how can you, if you're a caretaker by nature, like I am, I want to take care of people, but how can you really take care of people? You haven't taken care of yourself when you haven't done the things necessary for you to do in order to feel happy. So that you can spread that happiness, that joy, that love, those gifts to others. You got to provide a service to yourself. And that is the self-care piece that is missing when it comes to the experience of a lot of mothers. We have that guilt that, that is put upon us. And, and a lot of it is eternal. No one else around us really is putting that heavy guilt on us. It is what we perceive as the expectations of a mom that we then channel into our perception of ourselves. And then that gets retold in our heads that we're not doing enough for our kid. When in fact that you will be doing great for your child if you're taking care of you and doing the things that make you happy. So I had moments in my journey where I felt that strong self sense of, I'm not doing me. I was feeling like I was, everyone else needs became, became, you know, mine. I wasn't worried about what I needed. I was unhappy. I was not, but I wasn't showing it because of course I wanted to make sure everyone else around me felt okay. So I internalized a lot and that internalizing of that sense of not being satisfied led to me being really unhappy. 
So I had to say, okay, what's going to make me happy? What's, what, do, what do I need to do in order to get to the next level in my life where I felt like I was in charge, I was taking care of me, I was taking care of the people around me? How can I do that when I'm really not in a happy place? So one of the things I had to do was look at myself and say, okay, the, what part of my self-care journey is changing my eating habits. I was so unhealthy. I was so unhealthy. I was so not focused on what I was eating. I was focused on more making sure my, you know, my daughter had the right type of food, but wasn't really modeling that behavior. And so I had to change my eating because my health became a real concern for me to the point where my doctor was like, if you don't change your eating habits, if you don't do anything different, you are going to have diabetes. Like it's not even a joke. I was borderline twice in my life, <laughs> if you can believe it, twice in my adult life, I've been borderline diabetic because of my weight. I, so in those moments, I had to say, at the second time, I was like, how can I be back at this place again? I was back there years ago, and why am I back here having the same conversation? I had this conversation just last year with my doctor. Where he was saying, you know, you're borderline diabetic. You need to really take care of yourself. And in my conversations with him, he's like, why are you so worried about everything else around you? Don't you know you need to take care of you? And I was just like, how can I? When can I stop and take care of myself when I got so much on my plate? And he's like, you're no good to anybody around you. If you keep letting what's on your plate stop you from getting where you need to be. And so I'm noticing people are dropping off. So my assumption is that I might be frozen or cutting up. If I am, can you please let me know in the comment section? Uh, please let me know if you can hear me because I feel like I might be cutting up again. And I truly apologize for that. Okay. So... I'm going to stop the broadcast and come back in because I want to make sure.